Hey guys, so today what we're going to be going over is ways to use u substitution in integration. So we have a problem here that we said we have the, in, the indefinite integral from 3 of 3 sine of 2x dx. And when I see a problem like this and I've got a composition of two functions inside of here, that what the one of the rules I'm going to use is u substitution where we have u sub I'm just going to abbreviate it so we don't have to spend time writing uh, is if I have a function with inside another function here multi so it looks pretty similar to our in integration that we have here I'm then going to replace the inner function with a u. And then when I do a change of variables, I'm then going to get my du. So when I have over here, I'm going to have my let my u equal my g of x. Then my du is going to equal my g prime of x dx. And that's what I'm going to be plugging into here. So now I'm going to have my f of u. And then for my du, I'm going to have my g of x prime dx. So when we apply this method into our problem here, and I'm going to notice that I've got a, compo a composite function here. So I've got a function with inside another function here, so I'm going to let my, my u equal my 2x in this case. So I'm going to rewrite this problem now as the integral of 3 sine of u. And we're going to see what happens when I do the substitution, but now I need to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Of the, uh, of, of the equation here. And so I get du over dx, which is the derivative of u, and, or sorry, the change in u and the change of x, equals my 2. And for me to make my substitution work, I'm going to then multiply by a dx and then subtract and then divide by a, a 2. So then I'm going to get my du over 2 equals my dx. And that's what I'm going to be plugging into here for when I do my substitution. So now I have my du over 2 as my, as my problem here. The next thing I'm going to notice is I have a 3 sine u over 1 multiplied by a du over 2. And I notice that because I'm multiplying across, it can now rewrite this as 3 over 2 sine of u du and from in from our methods of integration that we saw that we can actually pull out the constant out in front of the integral and really s separate it so now my three halves integration of sine of u du is now in a more f familiar form to me where I can then go on and, and take the integration of this. So when I go ahead and do this, I now get 3 halves, and I'm going to make a little box here. And I know the, that, the in, that the integration of sine is a negative cosine. So now I'm going to have a negative cosine of u. And then because I don't have any, ha have any limits here, I have to make sure I add this plus c term out, out at the end of, of the in integral to have my answer. The real trick that I want you guys to really take away from this is that anytime we start with an x and we do a, a change of variables to turn into u, you want to then plug back in for that, or that original term. So we're going to go up here and I'm now going to plug in my x term again back into, the, into my final answer here. Because I have a negative, I'm going to pull that out in front because I am multiplying. So I'm going to have a negative 3 over 2 
cosine. When I plug in the u for the cosine, I've got a 2x. And then I have my plus c value as my final answer here for this, for this problem. Yes, Janet, go ahead. So you said you could take out the three halves and you can take out a negative. How come you can take a constant out of an integral? That's a great question. So I'm going to choose a, a different example to explain that, where I've got the integral from 0 to 2 of 3x dx. And what, I, what I'm trying to say is, what we're trying to say is that this equals, if I pull the the constant 3 out in front, but keeping the limits the same and the function the same as well. Yes, that's the exact question I'm asking. Okay, great. So what we have here is two functions here. I've got a 3x and I have an x. So when we graph these, these two functions here, what we notice here is that I'm going to have my graph here. I'm going to make it a little big because we're going to draw both on, on the same one, is if I plot my y equals 3x graph. So let me make a little legend here. 3x. I know that this is going to be a pretty steep curve, uh, it's curve, a pretty steep line, but again, I'm evaluating it from 0 to 2, which I can bring that straight down, and I'm trying to find the area underneath this curve here. For this one, what we're saying is that now my y equals x graph is now much more shallow, but again, I'm still trying to find the area underneath the limits of 0 to 2. So when I, when I do my integration and I then say, or not, not even my, my integration, but if I can just use this arithmetic or going back to geometry where we say, okay, I know that this side is 2. For my blue graph, for, for my blue function here, using rise over run, I'm going to plug my 2 into my 3 here and I'm going to get a 6 as my side. For this, for my y equals x graph, I know, again, this side is also going to be 2. But then when I just plug in this, we all, we're going to get a 2 here as, as well. When I then solve for the area underneath both of these curves, the blue one here for the y equals 3x, is I'm going to plug in my 1 half, the base, which is 2, times the height, which is 6. And I'm going to get 6 as my answer for this graph here. For the, set, for, the, for the lower graph, for the green graph in this case, the y equals x, we have this 3 out in front here. So this, so this is going to be tagging along for the ride. This is just like if Marshall and I would go, go, up, go up to Santa Barbara for, for the weekend. He's, he's not driving. He doesn't pick any of the music. I just, I'm the one in, court, in, in control, but he's just along for the ride. So I'm going to have my 3 out in front here, but I'm still going to do my 1 half, my base, times my height here, which we also find out because both of these will cancel, but I'm still left with a 3 times 2, which is going to give me my 6. And that's how we show that we can pull that constant out in front is because that both of these are going to equal the same no matter if we do if we keep the integration inside or the constant inside or if we pull it out in the very end again that that constant is still tagging along for the ride yes Bob go ahead so for u sub is that the only method I have when dealing with composition of functions or is there another way to do it that's a, that's a great question. So the reason why we do a U substitution is because it's going to make this complex problem or this composition of two functions a little more familiar to me, where instead of having a composition of two functions, which is what I started with, by doing a change of variables or a U substitution, I then turn it into a single function that I can then integrate 
over. And like we said before, when you get to the very end, you then plug, you then, re you then go backwards and resubstitute the u in to get your answer back in terms of x. And the reason for the u sub is because we make, we want to, we want to visualize the path that we take with that, okay, well, how can I make this a little more f familiar to me where I've got a, a composition here where I've got a 2x and I've got a sine. I'm going to make my u equal my 2x because when I take the derivative using the power rule, I'm going to then get a 2, which is just like the 3 here or like my friend Marshall. It's just along for the ride. And then we saw here I can then pull the 3 halves out in front which we see in our final answer is of just again along for the ride. Thanks guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.